hey everybody welcome back to my channel thank you guys so much for being here i see that you guys are really liking this little series it's part one we've done part two we've done we're on part three and we have two more to go after today yes so it's specimen collection and it's all about your tubes your tube additives how to invert them how many times to invert them where they go in the laboratory and what type of specimen it yields for us so if you're interested you're excited stay right here for those of you who are here for the first time i do want to extend my extend much gratitude thank you so much for being here if you stopped here you're supposed to be here so hang on hang on tight and just go with the flow and you're really going to enjoy this video go ahead and subscribe if you have not because you are going to want to be here be in the loop um it's the best phlebotomy fam going and we just have a ton of fun during our live sessions during our, even during our pre-recorded as you can see in the comment sections of most of the ones that i've already put up so do comment let us know uh, what you think about what's going on in a video i do like to know um, if it's something different if i'm missing something if you know something that i didn't mention things like that so i do love it when you guys participate and let me know what's going on what you want to see and all that good stuff turn your notification bell on like i said so you don't miss out on the lives phlebotomy after dark is a lot of fun you meet a lot of great people very informative and you get a chance to win a flat box so make sure you're in the loop for that this video like i said is part three of a specimen collection series that i am doing and there's five parts this is three and we are referencing our ascp phlebotomy exam flashcard system where this section is all about specimen collection so we're going to jump right into this video after i tell you guys or just kind of go over just briefly what we've already touched the base on as well as the tubes so we have talked about our pink top tube our red plastic tube our glass red top tube we've gone over the black top tube which i do not have any of we've done the blue dark blue top tube and we've also done our royal blue top tube or sky blue the light blue tube is referenced as light blue and then you'll see it referenced as sky blue as well so don't be confused but just know that it's light blue and then you have a dark blue top tube and like i've said we've gone over our pink top tube both of our red top tubes our glass red top tube as well as our plastic red top tube and yeah so today we are going to go over our gold and our tiger top two we're going to go over our gray top two which i thought i had in front of me i lost the oh there it is our gray top two and we are also going to go over our dark green top two so this is part three so yes if you have them get them out look at them and you can go over it with me because what i like to let everyone know also is please don't sleep on your labels that are on your tubes if you're not familiar with something or you're concerned about what's in the tube read your tubes the labels on your tubes before you stick someone or if you're just you know not sure now this is of course before you go in the room because you don't want to go in the room if you're in a hospital setting and fumbling with your tubes and trying to figure out what what's what most of you are going to know this anyway before you start all of that and that's what this is for anyway refresher and also to just get you um uh, yeah caught up if you're not so let's jump right into our tubes and the first thing on the card of course it says the collection tube so we're going to start with our gold and our tiger top they call it the tiger top um red gray so that's like a reddish gray um, top two we call it a speckled top tiger top um, both of these tubes are serum separator tubes and I've said that over and over and over again in my videos because I don't want anyone confused about these two tubes thinking they're separate like they're going to do something different no they're going to do the exact same thing they're going to yield serum so that's the first thing about these two tubes they're going to yield serum that is the specimen that you're going to get when you use these tubes they're going to test for blood chemistries, serology, and immunology. Guys, if you're taking notes, take your time. Go ahead and write that down. 
These tubes have to be inverted five to six times. Why? Because they are lightly coated with a gel activator. Now we do have the gel, the clock activator gel in the system. Well, the gel in the, in the system, the gel in the bottom of the tube. And we also have, like I said, clock activator sprayed in the tubes. So because there's, there are things in these tubes, you do have to invert them. They're going to go to chemistry and like I've also said, they're also known as serum separator tubes. And you can know and realize, you will understand, when you see gel in the bottom of your tubes, they will separate your serum from the blood. And this one has been spun, as you can see right there. There's uh, the gel in the middle and then there's the blood on the bottom and the serum on top. Yes, those are your serum separator tubes. So, what did we learn about these tubes? Blood chemistry, serology, and immunology is what they'll be used to test for. They have a clot activator and gel at the bottom. They yield serum. We have to invert them, <clears throat> excuse me, five to six times. They go to chemistry to be processed, and they're also known as serum separator tubes. Nice our gray top tube or light gray so I'm, I'm guessing this is the light gray but i've always referenced it as a gray top tube i don't know if there's a i don't know but this is your gray top tube if you see a gray top tube outside of urine you'll know that too but this is your gray top tube for blood for labs your gray top tube tests for lactic acid um glucose tolerance test and blood alcohol levels the additive in this tube is sodium fluoride. It's going to yield plasma. We have to invert this tube eight to 10 times. Yes, see how I'm inverting it? Yes, do not shake your tubes. Lightly invert just like this after you collect your tubes. And I always say too, like once I pull my tubes, I'm usually inverting them like this while I'm doing other things or getting some paperwork ready or talking to the patient. Just be mindful and make sure that you invert your tube. And your gray top tube must be inverted eight to 10 times. This tube is going to go to chemistry, the chemistry department, and it must arrive on ice more than likely. It may need to be on ice. There are some tests that may not have to be on ice, but the lactic acid is the main test that you have to send this specimen down on ice if you've drawn a lactic acid. I do have a little reference here. I don't know if you guys can see this, but the very first test here that requires ice is a lactic acid, and it's your gray top tube, and it's sodium fluoride is the additive. So yes, I'll pull that out later, but that's your gray top tube. That's what it will yield. And that's where it will go in the lab. And that those are the tests that will be run when you pull a gray top tube. Follow? Awesome, awesome. Last of the three that we're talking about, although it looks like four, our dark green top two. Now again, remember we have a light blue and a dark blue. We also have a light green and a dark green. But in this instance, we're only talking about the dark green top two, which is why, again, it's very important that you reference what tube you need or if you're telling someone to pull a tube, you do want to say it's a dark green top two or a light blue top two. We have to be specific so that we get the right test, so that we yield the right resorts, results, and so that it goes to the right department in the lab, okay? Make sure you do that. This, when we're using this particular tube, it's going to check um, the, the tests that are gonna be run, of course, our blood chemistry levels, um, and ammonia can be run in this as well, and um, electrolytes, and an arterial blood gas even. Um, they can use this tube for that. Sodium heparin is in this tube. That's the additive. So we already know we're going to be inverting it. And we're going to invert this tube eight to 10 times. Yes, pretty big tube, right? So we're going to invert this tube eight to 10 times. It's going to yield plasma or whole blood, depending on what, what's needed, what test. You have several tests. It's, going to, it, it's just going to depend on what's needed and what the doctor has ordered, whether it's going to yield plasma or whole blood as far as um, what they're going to be, what specimen it's going to yield. Chemistry, of course, and most times when these are drawn, they are stat tests. Um, 
yeah especially if it's an arterial blood gas um, any ammonia levels and things of that nature they're going to want those stat so this is usually a stat test to an inverted eight to ten times it goes to chemistry and those are your tests and your additives for that too and those were the only tubes on here so that was a good one that was quick what made it nice and quick and the two serum separator tubes i think because everybody knows these so it's kind of easy to go through that blood chemistry serology and immunology eight five to six time inversions it has clot and a clot activator in it lightly sprayed and then it has the gel at the bottom to allow the serum to be separated from the blood it's also known as the serum separator tube and you're going to yield serum of course that gray top tube lactic acid on ice inverted eight to ten times you're going to get plasma from this sodium fluoride is the additive and of course like i said it may need to be placed on ice depending on the test last but not least your stat dark green top tube is usually stat it goes to chemistry it's going to have to be inverted eight to ten times blood chemistry is a test ammonia and we said electrolytes and arterial blood gas plasma or whole blood is what this tube is going to yield so yes that is part three yes we have two more like i said to go because so far these are the tubes that we've gone over already yes so a nice little series the next set of tubes that we are more than likely going to go over are our tan top tube our yellow sterile top tube and our yellow non-sterile top tube now this one is really good and informative and i think i talked about this in a live maybe we went over these tops but this is good because you can really take notes and get in here and take notes and understand the order of draw when it comes to a yellow top too. Yes, a lot of people say, oh no, the yellow, but you have to be specific because people have told me, no, the yellow goes first before, you know, the red or the blue. Yeah, that's a whole nother video. So make sure you tune in, go ahead and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss that. And we're gonna do the tan, the yellow, sterile and the yellow non-sterile too and like i said specimen collection from the ascp phlebotomy exam flashcard system and the link is down below if you're interested in those and the links are down below for part one and part two so yes thank you guys so much for watching please let me know in the comment section below what you'd like to see next so that i can get that up for you after we finish this series but also make sure to join in on the lives because i'm still going to be doing little mini uh classes but we're also doing live just doing lives and it's question and answers and just come with whatever questions and comments that you have so that i'll know what to do during the class and what you guys want me to really touch base on so yes looks like i'm look feel like i'm all over the place in this video but whatever we got through it i'll see you guys in the next one until then y'all have a great day and i'll see you later bye